Here on my lathe, you can see I have a three-jaw chuck. It's the one that's used the most, of course, and very handy for holding rod, round material. But it's not so good at holding square. You need a four-jaw chuck. Well, I have a four-jaw jaw chuck. It's over here. But it's a massive lump, a really big one. It's much larger than this one, so it takes a lot of uh, humping around to change over which I would do if the job called for that, but for turning small pieces of uh, square material, uh, such as this, this is just a small section, but you can imagine it, it's a rod. You can either pack out the jaws so it sits in the middle, which is not very convenient. One tip is to find a piece of tube that this will slide into, and uh, slip the tube, and then when it's in the three jaw chuck, it'll squeeze up and hold on all four corners. But it's not really ideal, and you have to find a tube that will fit this, and it's limited to this sort of size. What happens when you want a larger size? Well, you've got to find another piece of tube. So my answer to this, and the tip I was shown many years ago, was to take a piece of round stock, and here I have a piece of round stock, cut it in half, and file two sections that represent a square. This can now sit in the in the chuck. The advantage of such a system is that you can accommodate different sizes and a bonus is it's self-centering. Here I have a piece of wood in the in the vise. very easy to plane, very handy to have a nice vice like this. But supposing you're working on site and you haven't got a, a decent vice, perhaps you're working on trestles, perhaps you're working on a scaffold board. Well, you've got a couple of G-clamps, you can G-clamp the, the wood Clamp the clamp, to the scaffold board. Like so. And you've got a bench stop, and it's solid. An alternative to this, if you've got very long lengths of wood, and you require a bench stop, and again perhaps you're working on a scaffold board supported by a couple of trestles. You need a bench stock of some description. Well, you can put a clamp at one end, but uh, a better arrangement would be to cut a piece of wood, this sort of shape. I think you can see the, the idea. And screw and glue that to the underside of the scaffold board. So when, pardon me, when required, you simply turn the board up the other way and with the aid of a piece of wood like that, you can drop that in there, and it doesn't matter what size the, the wood is, it will jam the, the piece and hold it very steady, and the more you push, the tighter it holds it. I'll turn that off and then you can hear me better. If you're drilling, edge of a piece of wood and you want the holes several slap bang in the center well you could use a, a marking gauge to go down the a mark where the center is you could use dividers or a backstop but a simple little device I've come up with is a little piece of plastic like so and there's a couple of bolts threaded in this can be made out of anything you like and this hole in the centre is the size of the hole you want. So all you have to do is drop it on the wood and uh, line up the drill and drill away. And the hole will be exactly in the centre. And it doesn't matter where along there you go, it will still be the centre. And the advantage of this little tool, it doesn't matter how thick the material is, I can drop it on there and it will still be in the centre.
This is a, a nylon stiff nut. It's called that because it's got a little nylon ring in there and it interferes with the thread and stops the thing coming undone. Well that's the theory and they're fine. But uh, a mate of mine that rides a motorbike is having a clamp on his exhaust pipe continually come undone. He's tried it through star washers and you can buy special nuts that don't incorporate the nylon. But uh, he didn't have one. And a quick dodge is to take a an ordinary nut and with the aid of a hacksaw put a slot down it at an angle not straight in and as you can see it still does up on a nut perfectly okay no problems at all okay but if you then take the, the nut and working on this side just take a hammer just give it a little tap, a bit more, watch me thumb, that's done it, you can see I've just closed up the gap, now it's a stiff nut and it will take a spanner to put that on, but I guarantee it won't come undone. You're out on site and you're using an electric drill and perhaps you're using one with a proper chuck instead of these horrible keyless things and you're drilling away and you're quite happy and then you want to change to a different drill where's the key gone someone's pinched it you've dropped it in the long grass you're stumped right well a quick and easy one here is to find another drill that will fit in the hole of the chuck and then using a screwdriver just simply use it like a fulcrum like so and you've now undone your chuck okay well I've covered some woodwork tips and some engineering and lathe tips uh, I'll make this the last one rather than go on for too long but I uh, don't know how well it shows up with this little chappy. Oh, it doesn't show it too bad, does it? That little chappy is a Viking warrior head. And uh, it's a pattern. And uh, it's uh, a replica of the 1920s Rover bonnet mascot. And uh, it was used to produce lost wax castings. Well, I've recently visited a guy who's also produced these. I gave him the original and he touched it up a little bit. And he's got some fantastic details. And perhaps I'll show you how he done this on a later series. But in short, he used uh, green sand, but instead of the normal um, uh, sand mix, where you get a sort of a, a texture, He'd used Portland cement and silica of soda. And he'd, he'd mixed the two mixtures to a consistency. And the detail, I've never seen anything like it. It actually outstrips lost wax casting. More on that another time.